There are two formats of an IPv4 address. Computers communicate with each other through the use of IP addresses, which is a 32-bit binary number represented by four sets of three-digit numbers called octets. Each octet has a range of 0 through 255. An IP address is a logical address that uniquely identifies a node or host on an IP network. The decimal representation is for our benefit so that we can more easily see and configure them. So binary, then, is a numbering scheme in which numeric values are represented using two digits, 0 and 1. So we're going to take a look here at uh, basically how binary is calculated. Uh, the digit's weight increases by powers of 2 rather than by powers of 10. Each digit, then, is a placeholder. The digit furthest to the right is the 1's digit. The next digit to the left is the 2's digit. Next comes the 4's digit, then the 8's digit, then the 16's digit, then the 32's digit, or 32nd digit, and so on. The decimal equivalent of a binary number is calculated by summing or summing up all the digits or all the placeholders. For example, the binary number 01010101 is equivalent to the decimal 64 plus 16 plus 4 plus 1 equals 85. As you can see from the small table there, uh, when the digit is turned on, when the bit is turned on, that placeholder value is calculated. So starting on the far right, you can see the 1's place, 2's place, 4's place, 8's place, 16's place, etc. And so if a bit is turned on in that uh, placeholder or that digit, you add up the value of that placeholder. So 64 plus 16 plus 4 plus 1, that's going to give you 85. Decimal then, or base 10, as opposed to to binary uh, is a numbering scheme with numeric values which were rep represented using 10 digits, 0 through 9. The digit's weight increases by powers of 10. Each digit is a placeholder with the furthest digit to the right being the 1's digit or place, followed by moving to the left in succession, the 10's place, the 100's place, etc. For example, let's say we have two computers that want to communicate with each other. Each has an IP address that is represented in binary. Let's just say that one computer has the IP address 192.168.2.200, and the other one is 192.168.3.200. Obviously, most of those numbers are the same. The only ones that would be different would be the ones in the third octet, which is the 2 and 3, respectively. So in binary, uh, 2 is just 10. So the 1's place is not turned on, but the 2's place is. And the number 3 would be represented by 1-1. One, one, or we would have 1-1 one, one and 1-2 one, for a total of 3. And so you'd be able to very clearly see the difference once you took the binary and converted it into decimal. Uh, again, it's a lot easier for us in this human readable format than to try to look at binary numbers and compare every 0 and 1 uh, in parallel. Now we want to take a look at decimal to binary conversion and go a little bit deeper. All right, we can see here on the left, we'll take a look at binary to decimal and then uh, decimal back into binary. And again, there's our very simple little table there representing the bit values or placeholders uh, and what each one represents. So as you can see again on the far right, we have the ones place followed by the twos place. So as we're moving to the left, we are doubling as we're going. Or a better way to look at it is this table here. So on the top line, we see base 2. On the far right, it says 2 to the 0. Uh, in exponential notation, 2 to the 0 is equal to 1. Really, any number to the 0 is equal to 1. And then we have 2 to the 1, which is 2. 2 to the 2, which is 4. When we say 2 to the 2, we say a number times itself. That's what we mean. So 2 times 2 would be 4. 2 to the third power would be 2 times 2 times 2, which would give us 8, and so on. So the first example has been done for you. Notice there in blue we see the decimal number 52. What does 52 equal when we're looking at calculating that in binary? Well, are there any 128s in 52? No. How about any 64s in 52? No, there's not. 64 is too high. Are there any 32s in 52? Yes, there is. There would be 1. What about 16s? Yes, 32 and 16 is, is uh, 48. And then we would add to that uh, 4 more, which is going to give us a total of 48 plus 4, 
which is 52. So we can see then that our value is going to be 00110100. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Why don't you take a moment and pause the audio and try to calculate the rest of the table yourself. All right. Next thing we want to do is we want to try to calculate going the other direction from binary to decimal. So you can see on the left-hand column uh, at the top in blue there, you see 11110010. One, 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 zero, zero, one, zero. And so if you go and tick or mark each one of the placeholders that represent the bits being turned on, you have 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16. There are no eights, no fours. There's a two and no ones. And if we calculate up each one of those and add them together, we will get 242. Again, take a moment and calculate the rest of the table for practice. The next section here is looking at the purpose of a subnet mask, uh, or what we would call subnetting, creating subnets. So why is subnetting needed? Uh, many organizations have uh, different branch offices, different locations, and they might not need a, a large block of addresses for a single location. Instead, they might need small blocks of addresses for each individual location. For example, uh, hospitals that have clinics uh, scattered around a city, uh, or schools within a school district, uh, different kinds of retail chains and outlets, uh, if you had a, a mall that had different stores in different locations or different restaurants in different parts of a city or across the country, they might want to have uh, an address range for each location. Corporate offices as well, as most of us know, uh, are also uh, areas where we could have uh, different branch locations, and there's probably a lot of other examples as well. So there are two purposes of a subnet mask and for doing subnetting. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to determine which bits are network and which bits are host, which we'll look at in just a moment. So part of the IP address then represents the network and part represent the host on the network. So for example, if you had uh, you know, streets in a city, you could have one Oak Street and one Cherry Street. And then you would have 121 Oak Street, which would be a host on that street, or 121 Cherry Street, which would be a host on that street. So as long as the host numbers uh, are in different networks, you could have two different hosts that had the same host portion of the address, but they must reside in different networks, or we might say like different neighborhoods. So again, we're going to kind of use part of this to figure out which is host, which is network. And then the next thing we want to do is determine if the other host that we want to communicate with is either local to us, like on the same street, or whether or not they're remote and we need to use routing in order to determine what network they are on. So, example. If we take a look at the subnet mask and look at it kind of like the dividing line here. We'll just kind of color code this real quickly. You and I can look at, uh, at this and see the decimal uh, a lot easier if we see 192.168.2.200 and then the subnet mask underneath it, 255.255.255.0. It's pretty easy to look at the decimal point after the third octet there and see that that is the network. If we do it this way, though, it, it's a little bit clearer. And that is, the computer again looks at this in binary, and so what it does is it takes the 255s, turns that into a decimal representation, and that's going to be all 1s. And so where the 1s stop, that's where the network portion of the address stops. And where the green, or the zeros begins, that is the representation above in the IP address of the host portion of the address. Okay. So as I was saying a moment ago, if you had two different hosts that were 200, as long as they were in different networks, uh, again, the analogy is being on different streets, you would be fine. So again, dividing at the decimal point, pretty simple. 
the next thing though here is we want to so you could see the the line coming down through this right here is again pretty simple um, but the next thing we want to take a look at here is uh, what if the dividing line is not at the decimal point okay so it's in the middle of an octet that's where it becomes a little bit more confusing because what that means is the subnet mass now is 8 bits dot 8 bits dot 4 bits in the third octet and the rest of those four zeros in the third octet are actually part of the host portion of the address. So when we look at the 192.168.2, part of that two in binary is host and part of it is network. Uh, hopefully here the blue and the green kind of distinguish that a little bit more clearly. Right. So this is where it becomes a little confusing because subnet mass again are not just 255s, they are contiguous bits of ones that are compared against the same number of bits in the IP portion of the address. So again, you can see that dividing line right there.